Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Airsic Hydra on Roll Corruption, and today we're going to be going through the action economy within Wrath and Glory so we can compare it to other titles, specifically the fantasy flight stuff that's come out in the past, Dark Heresy 2, yada yada yada, you know what I'm talking about, and we're going to look at how Wrath and Glory is different. Now this is going to be the first video of a playlist of videos going into the differences between the systems so you can have a little think and a comparison, reflection, and then decide what you like, what you dislike, and make your own choice about the system. Now. Firstly, we do need to highlight what Dark Heresy was, how it worked, so we can sort of make a baseline as to what the player's current expectations were and what the old way of doing it was. It's not to say the old is any worse, it's just to simply state it was different. So, generally speaking, and yes there are plenty of talents which will make exceptions to this, but generally speaking a player within Dark Heresy will do two things per turn perhaps with shouting a few sentences as well. But generally speaking, you can do one action per turn, and this could be two half actions or one full action. This makes for a very simple, in terms of formulation, action economy, because a player can look through the list, and barring a few minor exceptions, you can say, well, there's a half and there's a half. I'd like to do those, please. And provided they aren't both attacks or something like that, you can generally do it. So what sort of things can you do in a turn? You can move and you can shoot. You could do a charge, which is a run and an attack. You can't run and shoot because running is a whole action. You can sprint if you have the appropriate talent, etc, etc. And again, it's worth shouting out that Many, many talents within the game do change the action economy by making things cheaper, making things free, or allowing you to merge two actions together. But generally speaking, that is the average action economy a player has per turn. You also get one reaction, and you also get free sentences. Free stuff is sort of shout at someone in the name of the Emperor. There you go, there's your free action for the turn. Well done. Now, Wrath and Glory has changed this slightly to form an average of three things you can do per turn, but trying to keep a little bit of a lid on the player's power rating in terms of what you can get away with. So it reminds me a little bit more of D&D 5e, and before any red flags go up, it's simply to say that players will probably get more done per turn. A very simple comparison would be the following, and we'll try and sort of bring these examples to life with a few situations. The first is going to highlight a colonel walking down a corridor and spe steps through some smoke. The other side is a grunt pointing a gun at him. The colonel a attacks first because he's awesome. Of course he does. So what's he going to do? He's going to draw his sword using a simple action. He is going to walk towards him the final distance of two meters, and then he's going to use his attack action to stab him in the face. Ta-da! There is your three things. Not technically possible within Dark Heresy 2, and this again isn't to say the two systems are, are better or worse, this is just simply to say that this is what you can do differently. So within Dark Heresy we would be limited by a half action to draw our weapon and a half action to move toward him. If we wanted to charge, we wouldn't have a readied weapon for either system, meaning that we couldn't charge him in either circumstance, unless we had the ability to draw a weapon for free, of course. We're going to just assume that not everyone has the bloody talent, even though it's near enough mandatory, which is why I like the fact that this game's basically included stuff like that anyway. Putting pointless XP sort of sinks to one side that every character should get if they want to be remotely competent. Let us continue with further comparisons. Let us say that now the Grunt steps through and sees the Colonel in front. Let us imagine that the Grunt already has the weapon drawn. He is currently Colonel hunting. So what's he going to do? Well, he can move using his movement. He can turn that to a run using his simple action, and then he can shoot using his combat action keeping a free action there as well, just for him to yell, I hate colonels! That's something, again, that would not be possible within Dark Heresy 2, which does not allow you to run, which is a full action, and shoot unless you have the appropriate talent. So we're seeing a more mobile combat system within this, and I believe that that is the way, or rather that is the reason that this has been done, to provide a more, a, a more mobile combat system effectively by having the movement separated to the action economy, it allows you to always allow you to, you can do something in terms of mobility, you're not stuck. But it's it's a bit more interesting than that. But let's say, for example, we're going to make this a little bit more crazy. 
our colonel, if he got the drop on him, could grab him by the collar, grapple him, squeeze him tight, embrace him. And let's assume that he grapples him and restrains him. Now, GM permissions sort of provided, he could use his movement, let's say halved, for the sake of being fair, to drag him up to the door. And use, he could use his simple action to bash the man against the button on the door, opening the door as his simple action, which is opening a door. Stuff that doesn't require a test is typically a simple action. So reloading a gun, simple action. Opening a door, simple action. Don't have to make a roll for it, doesn't have to, but it's not, it's easy that you've done it. it. It's stuff that can still be done within a turn though. But this could also be pulling a lever. It could be breaking a door down as well, if it doesn't require a test, that is. So a simple wooden door on a primitive world is in front of you. You can kick it down, move inside and shoot your gun all in the same instance, which again is something that wouldn't be possible otherwise. And again, creates for a slightly perhaps more narrative driven combat as well. Potentially not. Oh, shout out to the subscriber sound in the background. So what we have now then is a slight emphasis on an expanded action economy. But we also have the ability to do multi-actions and multi-attacks per turn as well. And this furthers a character's capabilities. A multi-attack would mean that you are engaged with two people. No talents needed, you can attack both of them, but both at a penalty. Because the amount of successes you get can correlate with damage you do, not in the same way as SLs, but in a similar way, we'll go through the dice rolling system another time. But this does mean that you can attack two people, but you'll do less damage to two, probably, but maybe not, depending on the dice results. But again, a nice system, perhaps empowering players a little bit more, I think one could argue at this point, allowing you to get a sense of increased power but that being said if you really need to deal some damage you might be best off not doing that but a nice tool to have for a highly trained specialist shooter that has lots of extra dice that they're not going to need sure they could shoot at three targets at once with a notable penalty and you'll only roll damage once and apply it to all three but again a lot more can be done per turn. Multi-action as well would allow you to do multiple things per turn. So let's say we have a rock we need to lift off or a collapsed piece of um, scenery has fallen boof, on top of a comrade, breaking their leg. So strength test to start off with to lift the boulder up. Fine. Then a Medicaid test to quickly stop the blood flow. That is something, again, couldn't be done in another system but can be done in this when i say another system i mean the previous one so again both of those tests would be at a penalty because you're trying to do two but pretty cool if you ask me that you have a few more opportunities to do these sort of weird and wacky things if you want to jump from a rhino as it's moving full speed towards the enemy because you want to hit it with your saxophone you can do so you will get negatives to both tests but why not just roll with it. It's nice. It is perhaps a little bit cumbersome in terms of my first 10 minutes observing this um, action economy list. I feel it's perhaps not presented in the best way it could be, although I don't know how to improve it just yet. All I know is by having the types of action economy in the same table as the other things themselves, not just separated a bit. I feel like there's just too much going on on this page and it took me a little while to be like, woof, what's going on with all of this? What uses which? But I do think actually having done the combat a couple times, it's fairly simple to do. Maybe it would take a bit of getting used to, but would probably be quite familiar with a D&D ish sort of player. You can basically do one thing that involves a test per turn or multiple if you do the multi action with penalties. You can do one thing that doesn't involve a test per turn. You can do a movement and you can do a free thing per turn. And that's pretty much it. And that's, I think, an, a nice way of looking at it. You can roll a dice for something difficult, which could be combat or could be some sort of challenging um, circumstances. You could do something that doesn't need a roll as well, which is your simple action, or it could just be running a bit further. You can do your movement and then you can do your free stuff. So it's easier than it looks. It took me a few times of reading through this to really sort of get it in my head. But comparing the two systems, I do like the Wrath and Glory. I think potentially it might not suit some players that let's say 
prefer less narrative driven combat and perhaps as well for some of the tabletop players it might be harder to really get your head into making the most out of narrative combat but I think there's I like the freedom within Wrath and Glory I think it seems neat the idea that you can do that extra little bit per turn to make it feel more personalized and the simple action is is a great opportunity to do that but I do like the simplicity of Dark Heresy 2's system, which was by the time you crossed off the list, all the ones you're never going to use and all the ones that just simply couldn't apply to your character. I, I do like the fact that it's just simple. It, it's just simple, effective, job done, and some of the talents really remove a lot of the headaches. But again, I do have a big grumble about some of the talents being so damn important that quick draw, if someone gets a drop on you, is so punishing, whereas... You might as well just walk around everywhere with your weapon drawn because if you don't, you're you know you're going to get shot instead of them shooting you, etc. It, it's oh, too many things like that are technicalities that can become frustrating. Whereas I feel that that the aim is within Wrath and Glory has been to remove them, but probably at the expense of a little bit of individual personalization in regards to ability to react to those situations etc etc but certainly two slightly different systems but interesting to analyze the differences next session we're going to be going into the actual combat mechanics and how the two systems compare in terms of dice flow we'll be taking a few example turns so we can just make a comparison roughly how long is it going to take for a turn of dark heresy versus a turn of wrath and glory i think you'll be quite surprised at the differences in terms of time in terms of dice calculations maths involved or not involved as the case may be and that will be certainly an interesting analysis to make so guys have yourself a great day have yourself a great week in fact stay safe and i'll be talking to you again very soon don't worry and uh campaign is in the works gm prep videos will be coming at you soon take care